Okay, so um, we're going to start. Um, we give a lot of time to allow attendees to uh, join in. So um, we're going to start now. Um, good morning and welcome to the Office of Energy Transitions, Community Energy Transition Grant, RFP and Application Informational Webinar. So let me bring out the presentation. Okay, so uh, if you are able to see the screen, can you just uh, give a, like a thumbs up or some reaction if you are able to view the screen? That would be great. Okay, thank you, Bill. Okay. So once again, welcome to the Energy Transition uh, Grants RFP and Application Informational Webinar hosted by the Office of Energy Transition as DEED. A um, bit of information, this webinar has been recorded. A recording of this webinar will be posted on DEED and the Energy Transition Office websites. So the link is there. Uh, this will be recorded and we're going to I'll have a copy on the website for you to uh, have further reference if needed. If you have questions during the presentation, please step into the chat box. So um, Carla is here, she'll be monitoring the uh, chat box. So if you have questions, you can just leave your questions in the chat box and uh, we're going to capture all of your questions and provide answer in writing. And all of those right, the answers will be posted on the Energy Transition Office website on a frequently asked questions. So please feel free to leave in your questions for anything you hear during this discussion. So also questions about the RFP and the application should also be sent to the Energy Transition Grant Program email box. That's the email box right on here, which is cetgp.d at state dot mn dot us so you're welcome to leave questions those questions will be answered appropriately so for the agenda we got a welcome introduction we'll talk about important dates administrative considerations funding overview and program goals eligibility application overview and evaluation and other issues uh, we we'll consider wrap up now by way of introduction I'm Mike McCrouncy, the Grants Specialist Coordinator in the Office of Energy Transition at DEED. So also with me today on this webinar, I have the Executive Director of the Business and Community Development at DEED, Catalina Valencia, and I also have the Director of the Office of Energy Transition, Carla Vita. So Catalina, if you want to say anything, do you have any, maybe, to say thank you mike just to say we are very excited to be rolling out uh this grants program today and uh just want to use this time to have you walk people through uh what the program encompasses and how communities will be able to apply and be considered for this funding um, and just to say that uh, this is uh, a very important tool that will help for supporting communities. And uh, we hope to hear back from many uh, of these communities across the state. So thank you so much. And, and especially to you and Carla for the effort that's been put uh, behind getting this grant program re ready and, and rolled out. So thank you, Mike. Go ahead. Thank you, Catalina. Thank you so much. Uh, so we we go we move on. Uh, let's talk about important dates. So as you all may be aware by now, the RFP and the application was released on October 16, 2023. So it was released on the uh, we have it on the ETO website. We also have it on uh, deeds, contracts, and grants website. And uh, also uh, the release was sent to all of our impacted communities as well as the stakeholder for the ETO. So 
and a proposal and application due date is November 15, 2023 at 4 p.m. Central Time. Uh, all the ap application and proposal must be received via email through the mailbox here, which is cegtp.d at state.mn.us. All documents must be in PDF formats, grant application forms, as well as the project or the plan or the proposal, whatever we we'll call it. They all should be in PDF form and sent to the email box within a specified period. Or you will also receive your email back when your application has been received. Um, anticipated notification to applicants is December 29, 2023. And the contract for the grant entire grant runs up to June 30th, 2025. Administrative considerations. The Commissioner of D will review all grant panel recommendations and funding decisions, including final amounts awarded. Determinations will be based upon how well a plan or proposal addresses the economic and social impacts on the impacted community. D awards decisions are final and not subject to appeal. Applicants may be required to supplement their proposal at the request of the Commissioner of the and or the Governor's Office. Funding Overview So, on a Minnesota Statute 116J.55 that authorizes the Community Energy Transition Grant, up to $10 million is available in grants for State Fiscal Year 24 and State Fiscal Year 25. So, up to Four million seven hundred fifty thousand is available for state fiscal year twenty five. Another four million seven hundred fifty thousand is available for fiscal year twenty five. Eligible communities may apply for grant up to one million dollar per fiscal year. That's the max. You can't go above that. While matching funds are not required, applicants are encouraged to use leverage resources. So the Environmental Quality Board, we, the EQBs has a role in this grant. So many planning and economic development initiatives require environmental work as part of the analysis. One of the statute, which is 116J.55, regulating the Community Energy Transition Grants, it allows for funds for the EQB to assist communities with regulatory coordination and dedicated technical assistance on the conversion for these communities. As each community has unique environmental needs, we are deed a partnering with the EQB to support and work with you. You will receive information in the future from the EQB on this matter. Goals and objectives. So what are the goals and objectives of the Community Energy Transition Grant? The Community Energy Transition Grant program was created by the legislature to assist communities to address the economic dislocation associated with closing an electric generating plant. So that's the reference to the statute right there, Minnesota Statute 116J.55. So per the statute, uh, per state statute, uh, awarding proposals or projects will be awarded on three emphases will be uh, on three main emphases. So these are the three main areas that um, the community energy transition put emphasis on. So we we intend that the, your project will assist workers at the plant find new employment, including workers retaining and developing small business startup skill. Also to increase the eligible communities tax base and develop alternative economic development strategies to attract new employers to the eligible communities. So which community, the impacted community, how are, can, how are they eligible to, to be part of this grant? So also on the statute, eligible Minnesota community include counties, municipality, can be a township or tribal government in which an electric generating plan owned by a public utility as defined in section 216B.02 that is powered by coal, nuclear energy, or natural gas. Also, is currently operating and is scheduled to cease operations. Two, whose cessation of operations has been proposed in an integrated resource plan 
par with the commission on section 216b.2422 or whose current operating license expires within 15 years of the effective date of this section or to cease operations or was removed from the local tax base no earlier than five years before the date an application is made on this session. So these are just the eligibility criteria for the grant. So kind of application overview. The application process is divided into three parts. So we got project selection, we got stakeholder process, and we got application process. So let's look at each of them. Project selection, the community energy transition grant must be used to plan for or address economic and social impacts on the impacted community or region of planned retirement or transition. The below listed projects are acceptable per study. So we got land use studies, economic planning, researching, planning and implementing activities, capital cost of public infrastructure necessary for economic development, impact studies and other planning activities enabling communities to be shovel ready and support the transition from power plants to other economic activities to minimize the negative impact of power plant closure on tax revenues and jobs. So stakeholder engagement. So it is we part of the application process um Impacted communities are encouraged to solicit input from stakeholders through engagement. So some of the stakeholders we uh, expect you to solicit input from are regional planning councils, economic development organizations, sovereign nations, educational institutions, elected and appointed officials, organizations representing workers, nonprofits, low income or environmental justice communities and other relevant organizations so the stakeholder engagement process continues so we also expect that at least one public meeting that allow for the public input in which a discussion of the proposed use of the community energy transition grants funds was on the agenda also we encourage you to solicit input and feedback recording regarding the use of the community energy transition grant funds by one hosting one or more meetings to obtain public input two provide a copy of the approved minutes for the meeting three optionally you can provide inputs via letters or emails from stakeholders who are able to attend the public meeting application process narrative so a detailed project narrative we expect a detailed description of what the project will entail and who will be responsible for project administration and implementation for a capital project we also want to know how the capital project addresses a current deficiency and or entails an investment that will support economic development application process continues. So if the program involves beneficiaries or training, we want to know how the program will be staffed and all use of third parties, vendors, or contracts to support or administer the program. Two, who is eligible to participate? Three, plan for outreach, technical assistance, and support. Four, how the program will reach out to populations that are historically unserved and or most impacted by closures. So as part of your application process, we also want to know the timeline of implementation. Whatever project you choose to do, we also want to know the timeline of implementation. We also want to know how the project will address economic and social impact of the plant closure. Also, how the project is in line with local or regional economic social needs. application process continues so uh, we also want to do a description of the stakeholder process undertaking to arrive at this proposal description of how the input was solicited and reviewed specific organization and or individual that provides input and in what 
form. So B, uh, metrics to assess the impact of the project and associated goal of each metric. We will request that grantee provide report on these metrics over the course of the project. As also part of the application process, C will require a summary of the detailed budget. So a special note, the statute that authorized the grant requires that a grant application made by a county must include a resolution of support from the legislative body in the city in which the electric generating plant is or was located. That's statute 116.55. A lack of a resolution will deem the application incomplete. Grantees are encouraged to completely fill out the grant application forms and submit along with the project or proposal. So uh, the project proposal was the specification that we require for that. It should be like 12 point font area or calibre prefer, no more than 10 double space pages with a one in inch margin on all four sides. We also require an executive summary, like one page, which will not count towards the 10 page uh, limit. So D is not responsible for any issue relating to technology. program deliverables. So um, impacted community that will be awarded the grant will be requ will require this deliverable from you. You submit a quarterly narrative that describe progress of the grant will be due on the 30th of the month following the end of the quarter. We also encourage you, encourage you to actively participate in evaluation and data collection efforts that assess the impact of this initiative. Submit monthly reimbursement payment request form, RP errors. We also encourage you to ask questions and we also answer our also answer our questions when we, we have any. Uh, comply with applicable state and federal requirements, policies. Applicable policies may include but not limited to federal regulations, D policies, state statutes, uniform guidance and order and the Office of Grant Management Policies. So the evaluation overview. So your proposals will be evaluated based on this uh, criteria. So on the left hand side, we have the categories and we on the right hand, we have the maximum points that each category can accrue. So project scope, uh, we want to clearly define project scope. So a clearly defined project scope a maximum point of 10 points. Timing, we also want to clearly define timing or real realistic timing within the framework of the contract. So timing is so important. So the maximum point there is 10 points. Financing, which include your budget, we need a detail and also a summary of your budget and the max point for that category also 10 points. We also want to know the eco what's the economic impact of a proposal, what economic impact would that bring to the impacted community? Uh, 25 points for that. And what also impact will your proposal has on the community? And we have 25 points for that. And we place a serious emphasis on partnerships, collaboration, and community engagement. So we encourage you to engage various partners, various stakeholders within the region, within uh, the impacted communities, and select uh, solicit input. Uh, to whatsoever proposal that you want to submit. So if that category covers 20 points and the total points that the entire proposal will be scored on is 100 points. Post selection requirements. So all grantees are required to submit the following post selection. Tax identification and unique entity identifier numbers. SWIFT supplier ID, that is the vendor number. So if you're new to the system, uh, state system, uh, on, in the RFP on page number 10, we have the process how to register for SWIFT ID and also for your tax identification. is You can be found on, in the RFP on page number 10. 
implementation meeting, all grantees receiving funding will be required to participate in an implementation meeting, the date and time to be determined. This required meeting will cover these expectations of the grant, contracting, financial reporting requirements, monitoring, quarterly narrative reports, questions and answers. Technical assistance questions. So at any time of the process, you are encouraged to send your questions via email to the email box listed here. That is the community energy transition grant dot deed at state dot mn dot us. And your question each week will answer question and will post answer to frequently asked question on the ETO website. Also on the ETO website, we have other opportunities uh, for grants, both federal and state on the ETO website. This is the link to the ETO website. Uh, thank you so much. This is the end of this presentation. So, Carla, any comments? Uh, Catalina, any final comments? As Mike said, I'd ask everybody who's on this uh, webinar and those watching after the webinar when it's uh, posted for the review that if you have any questions, certainly let us know. We're here as a resource. Catalina, did you have anything else to add? No, just ask people, as you said, uh, to make sure you are asking your questions uh, in advance as you are preparing for putting together your, your proposals and applications. Uh, make sure to connect with uh, Mike and Carla uh, as needed. Uh, and, and again, our team is a resource uh, to guide you through this process. So make sure you, you are making good use of, of that time and, and making sure we can help you address any questions that come your way. Thank you very much, Carla, and thank you, Catalina. Thank you everyone for attending this webinar. So we come to the end. Bye.